All right, guys, so I just finished cleaning, grabbing lunch. Um, I do wear a tank top when I clean because I work up a sweat. Hey, um, kind of funny story for you here, okay? So this is funny to me because <laughs> I got this email from Leandro today, and I told him don't bug me on the weekend, right? But he still does. He's like, you don't have to open it on the weekends, your email. So, um, so he sent an email, and he's like, you did a 180. You did a 180 on this. And he's like, that's not the deal. The deal is not we're going with a fault divorce. So it's kind of funny because I'm like, just because I agreed if he wants a divorce, he can get one doesn't mean his financial obligations are not going to be there. So scripture, okay, go to scripture when you're dealing with stuff. Go to God in prayer when you're dealing with stuff. Put it on the table, okay? Put it on the table, and there's a proverb that says, before you eat what is in front of you, make sure, basically, you know what you're eating, okay? And if you are given to an appetite, basically, you might as well just, you know, end it all, because you don't want to be somebody who is given to an appetite. I think it says something like, I don't know. I got to look it up. Something like uh, take a knife, you know, uh, cut your hand off or your tongue or something. I don't know. But the point of the proverb, and I remember this, is don't be given to your pleasures in life. Okay? So in the case of the divorce, um, my husband, you know, wanted everything his way. He wants to only pay for taxes. He only wants to pay for um, as little as possible, right? So put it on the table, go along with them. Okay. Put it out there. Just word it carefully. Put it out there and see what they really are offering you on the table, so to say. Um, are they really sincere? Do they really want to get a divorce or do they just, are they using you? And if you are given to pleasure and you're given to you know, just giving people what they want, you're going to have some consequences, right? You're going to be harmed by this. So when you put something on the table for your husband and his divorce non-attorney person, whatever he is, I still don't know what a non-attorney is exactly, put it out there and see what they really want. So he's all ticked off. He's like, this was not the deal. So all is fair in love and war, right? If I want to change my mind, I have every right to change my mind. All is fair in love and war. And also, um, this is kind of hypocritical, right? They're arguing with me about changing my word when the very fact that we're going through a divorce is my husband breaking his word. So he's breaking 32 years of... Um, well, 33 now, 33 years of a commitment he's breaking to me, but he wants me to keep my word in a divorce, right? So it's funny how karma comes around and when it's your turn, you might not like it. So um, there was something else I was going to say too. So yeah, get the obligations, get the financial obligations that you want. Don't listen to them complaining, whining, we want this and we want that. He's like, you wasted everybody's time. No, I didn't. He's the one who decided to go along with this. And this was the other thing I was going to say. I said, hey, Kevin, I'm a little bit older than you, which means I'm a little bit wiser than you. So when you put something on the table and you just want to see where the heart really is, and I saw my husband sign for a divorce instead of being like, okay, this is like life support, right? You know it's coming, the plug comes off, and you know it's final, and you have to accept it. So rather than him being like, um, being like, oh, my son just texted me, being like, oh, you know what, she's willing to, you know, work at this, and maybe I should just forgive. And I told Kevin, you know, he can just learn to forgive. Whatever offense he has, he can forgive that and work on rebuilding his marriage. So, um, they're in a rush for a divorce, which tells me this is about money or a woman pushing him to hurry up either one. So I said, what is he hiding a girlfriend? What's going on? 
and don't feel obligated at all to anybody who wants to divorce you and take your life away and take your money and not give you what you deserve for 33 years of marriage. And he's like, fine, you can go to court. You can come to court in New Hampshire and you can talk about your slanderous accusations. Nothing I have said has been slanderous. Nothing at all. Nothing. Um, sometimes the truth hurts and it doesn't mean that it's slander. So yeah, I said, yeah, I will be coming to New Hampshire. I'll be hanging out. I think I'll say hi to family. I'll be working. I'll be going to the church and, uh, yeah, New Hampshire is my state too. I love New Hampshire. It's my roots and it's where I'm from. So he's not going to use my presence in New Hampshire as a weapon against me. So I very much belong in New Hampshire, very much. I am a New Hampshire girl all the way around. So no issues with me, you know, getting over there, except I am going to ask for traveling expenses since he wants me in New Hampshire for court. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, guys, that's what I got.